In this short demo, I want to show you how uh, DSM handles the life cycle of a package uh, from pretty much creating the package all the way to the retirement. Um, software packages um, do go through a certain to certain phases. So first you would create the package as I showed in the previous short videos. Um, once the package is created, you would then go through specifying the platforms the package was designed and tested for. So you would, for instance, select the 64 and 32-bit uh, uh, environments. You would say it's for Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. Certain server op uh, operating systems are supported and so on. Once you selected th those, you would then go and run a local installation of the package that you previously created to make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to do. This is usually where the job of the actual desktop engineer ends and uh, it's handed over towards more of a production and rollout phase. So once the package was successfully tested, you can also um, add certain uninstall uh, sequences to a package. So within one package, you have the instruction on how to install the software and uninstall the software. So when you assign the software to a machine, it gets installed. When that machine gets, for instance, taken out of the group that is associated with the software, it automatically then will roll back the software off that machine and, and uninstall it. Uh, once that is done, you would then prepare it for distribution. What that is, it actually compresses the files for replication purposes and distribution purposes within your infrastructure. So for to remote sites, to remote repositories across the globe, uh, that obviously you want to have all the data in a compressed format and not in an uncompressed format. Um, then you can set up the distribution and, and tell the system whether you want to have the software in your entire um, organization everywhere or, for instance, if you have a, a language-specific package or something that you know is only used in, in the Americas but it's not going to be used anywhere abroad. Uh, or if you have a French package and only need it in Canada and in your Paris location, uh, those things you can actually specify so not every package has to be deployed everywhere. So once you specified the target, and I'll just pick the Americas here in this case, and you can actually tell it when to start distributing it, then it actually goes out and deploys the package. Once that step is done, you would run a pilot installation. Uh, to do a pilot, uh, what that is, is actually the package before it's released, before it's available to any other parts of the organization, uh, the engineering team would run a pilot against like uh, some users that are very familiar with the software and are best to test it. Uh, they would also, some packages, they would just run against the IT department to make sure that it doesn't interfere with anything or breaks anything. So that's kind of your last check before you then finally release the package. Releasing the package means that this package is going to be set in stone. It's, it's this uh, revision one of the package gets created and this package can no longer be modified. It's now a production package deployed via either our service management solution or directly via the administrator via a push application or it's been made available uh, in the software shop for the end user to pull, uh, pull it whenever they need it. Once it's released, no more modifications can be done. To actually uh, modify a package after the fact, you can then go in here and add revisions to it. So you assign the package or create a shop, uh, a shop policy, and then you can actually add a revision, which is then a new version of that package. And when once that revision went through the same life cycle again, yeah, it's then up to you to decide on whether everyone that already has, let's say, revision four of the package then gets revision five, or if revision five is only going to be used going forward for new installations. And for everyone that gets uh, where the entire machine gets rebuilt, in that case, you obviously don't want to uh, deploy an older version. You would then go with the latest revision of that package. That's pretty much the life cycle of a package until you finally go in here and say, I want to retire the package. That means that package is no longer be active. It's going to be um, removed from the repositories out there, uh, but it's still in your um, database for you to take a look at it if you have to see of who received it in the past and, and what that package entailed uh, in case you want to build like a new version of it or you can actually uh, unretire a package too if you really have to.